Welcome to this video where we are going to be talking about our spine again and today we're going to be talking about our cervical spine or the most superior section of your vertebral column. Now if we have a look here I've got a few different drawings up on the screen because our cervical spine has a few unique features associated with it. So let's have a look at our directional terminology first. We have our superior and lateral views, as well as a lateral view of our full cervical spine, and also a superior view of our atlas and axis, which are the unique vertebrae of our cervical spine. So we have the atlas here and the axis here, and we'll talk about those more in depth in just a moment. But the first thing I'll just clear up quickly here is that whether you want to use the term cervical or cervical doesn't really matter all that much as long as you know kind of what you're talking about. Some people get confused when they say cervical they think it's in relation to the cervix so uh, if you want to use cervical so you don't forget that then I would recommend that. Now the first thing we want to know about our cervical spine is that we have seven individual vertebrae and they will be the C1 to C7, and I'm just going to highlight them here. So that's our C1 to C7 vertebrae, and the two unique structures, or the two unique vertebrae, will be our C1 and C2. C1 being the atlas, which I'm going to talk about right now. Our atlas is unique in the fact that it is going to have no spinous process or body, and I've just outlined it in green down here. But it does have large articular surfaces on its superior and inferior sides, or top and bottom. That is going to allow it to articulate with the occipital condyles of our skull. And you can remember the atlas as being the C1 by thinking about uh, atlas who supported the heavens in Greek mythology. So our atlas, uh, our C1, supports our world as we know it, which is our skull and brain. And our atlas is also going to articulate inferiorly with the axis. Now the axis we'll talk about now. So the axis being our C2 does have a spinous process at the back and also a body and on the superior side of the body we have an object called the dens. The dens is a large projection that projects superiorly here and the atlas will sit on top of that and allow us to uh, move our head side to side or nod no. So I'll just put this atlas on top of the axis here and we can see that it sits perfectly on top here and is going to allow us to shake our head and uh, motion for a no. So it allows side to side movement. And we also have a ligament called the transverse ligament which is going to extend from the atlas and wrap around the axis or the dens of the axis. And I'll draw that up quickly here now. So we can see our transverse ligament extending from our atlas around the dens of our axis here. And that is going to be how our atlas and axis uh, interact with each other. So our atlas will allow us to nod yes, so forward and backward movement, and the axis will allow us to shake our head no, so side to side movement. Now we can move on to the individual structures of our other uh, C3 to C7 vertebrae. And we have our body. Now the body of the cervical spine, or the body of the cervical vertebrae, is oval shaped. And like with our thoracic spine, the body is the largest portion of our cervical vertebrae. The next segment we're going to look at that extends our posteriorly is the spinous process of the cervical vertebrae. And the spinous process on our cervical spine is uh, short and has a split or a bifid end. Bifid meaning uh, split. And we can see that split here. So the tip of that spinous process is split. 
Another feature of that spinous process that we should note is in the cervical spine it extends mainly straight backwards, whereas in the thoracic spine it extended more at a downward angle. And now we can move on to our transverse process. The transverse process is being a point of our ligament and tendon attachment and also having a few unique features in our cervical spine. The first of which being our transverse foramen. The transverse foramen I'll just outline on the transverse process up here in uh, red. So the transverse foramen here are holes in the transverse process of our cervical vertebrae that's going to allow the passage of the vertebral arteries. The vertebral arteries leading to your brain to supply it with blood. So vertebral arteries. The next feature we can see on our transverse processes of the cervical spine is the superior and inferior articular processes. And I'll just outline those as well. So we have the superior process here, inferior on the bottom, and we'll also see those superior processes here on that superior view of the cervical vertebrae. So it's a point of articulation. It's going to articulate superiorly and inferiorly with the next vertebrae in that column. So it's articulation. And the last feature we're going to look at in this tutorial is our vertebral foramen. The vertebral foramen being this hole in the vertebrae here. And we can see it has a uh, somewhat oval shape for the passage of our spinal cord. And that oval shape is due to the path the spinal cord is going to have to travel in the cervical spine. And if we uh, took a look at our spine as a whole, we'd see that it's a uh, concave, convex, and then concave shape again, as far as cervical, thoracic, and lumbar goes. And the shape of our vertebral foramen will uh, reflect that because the spinal cord has to pass through it freely. And that covers everything we'll need to know about the basics of our cervical spine. I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.